Welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer, and this is an additional video to my solar power series. If you haven't checked them out, there's a link to them above. But today I'd like to talk to you about why solar isn't necessarily the answer to your winter energy woes. Now, there's been a lot about energy prices recently. It's pretty hard to ignore them if you're in the UK or Europe, and it's pretty bad, to be honest. Even with the energy price cap as implemented by the government, bills are still going to go up pretty heavily versus what they were a year ago. And I think that that's been part of the solar boom that we've seen this summer, is people seeing energy prices continue to rise, and as a result, have been going, well, I need a way to make my, you know, reduce my costs. And yeah, there's only so much you can do to reduce your home energy costs. Don't get me wrong, there are things you absolutely should do. But at the end of the day, you know, you still need to use a cooker, you still need to use a kettle, etc. Your, your costs are sort of fixed to a certain point. So solar energy looks like a great answer to it. And if you're installing it in the summer, it is incredible. You can really, with relatively small systems, get away with the majority of your energy use coming from solar panels during the day. If you have a battery, you can extend that into the night. The problem is, is in the winter, in the UK at least, solar panels just won't produce much energy. And I'd really like to talk to you about that so that if you're considering solar panels to help you get through the energy crisis, which already puts you in presumably a privileged position given that it's an extremely expensive thing to go and do at the moment with inflation doing what it's doing, or perhaps you're even considering taking out a loan to do it, I just want to talk you through the realities of how much energy you actually are going to produce versus what you think you're going to produce or what you might be led to believe. Now, I'm not saying that people are out to deceive it, you know, people, but at the end of the day, most the, the sort of most important calculation you're going to see when you're getting quotes for a system is, you know, the total amount of energy it's going to produce. And that figure can often match your, your actual, you know, energy needs. If you use 4,000 kilowatt hours a year, chances are, a, you know, a four kilowatt system is going to produce that but it's going to produce the majority of that in the summer months, leaving you high and dry in the winter when you probably need it most. So let's just take a look at the design for my system, which will give you an idea of how much energy your system would produce in the summer versus in the winter. Now, although my figures are going to be specific to my 8 kilowatts of solar panels and my 6 kilowatt inverter alongside the 10 kilowatt battery I've got, the actual energy produced in terms of the actual percentages are gonna be very similar for most people. So the specifics of my system are that it is a north, north, east, south, south, west split. So my production figures are gonna be slightly different, but honestly, this is really similar to what my parents have and their system is a 3.68 kilowatt system, mostly south facing. So if we look at the months May, June, and July, we're producing between 900 or projected to produce between 925 kilowatt hours and 964 kilowatt hours. That's a lot of power. That's almost three megawatt hours in three months. The problem is, is when we look at November, December, and January, that figure drops to 130 kilowatt hours in December and between 170 and 200 for January and November. So you're talking 80, 85% less than you would produce in the summer months. So if you're thinking solar power is gonna help you through the winter, chances are it isn't. Again, using my parents as an example, in December last year, the whole system produced 60 kilowatt hours of energy. It's nowhere near enough for their house. Given that they don't use gas, that honestly was a drop in the ocean. Uh, even with an air source heat pump. So I just wanted to take this as an opportunity to point out that although solar can look really good with the headline figures, when it comes down to it, in the UK at least, your production figures are going to be so much less for the winter months that it's probably not going to make as big an impact as you'd like. Now spread that impact across the year and there are obviously huge benefits, right? especially if you can get a good export tariff, such as Octopus Agile Outgoing, which pays up to 30 pence per kilowatt hour, you could essentially save up money in your account with the surplus you produce in the summer and use that to offset your costs in the winter. Unfortunately, the majority of the time, you're gonna be buying electricity 
a fair bit, at a fair bit higher a price than you would be selling it at, even with a tariff like Octopus Agile outgoing. Unfortunately, SEG payments, which is the sort of base rate that you have to get paid and the actual payments then that the energy companies will make, often quite a lot less. Uh, it's really only Octopus outgoing Agile that is so high. Often you might get stuck at five, maybe six pence per kilowatt hour, which is really a drop in the ocean versus what you're gonna be paying. I'm not trying to put you off solar power. I just want to be clear that although it can look really, really good, you need to do the math for the whole year and look at specific months to make sure it works for you. Now, I mentioned that my system has a battery and batteries are something you absolutely should consider, especially if you have access to an off-peak tariff where your off-peak electricity is significantly cheaper than your peak electricity. So in my case, I have a Solar Edge home battery. My parents have the Tesla Powerwall too. Now in both those cases, you can set them to charge up at specific times and then discharge, i.e. make that energy available at other times. So in the case of my parents, they have economy seven, which means overnight between midnight and I think it's 7 a.m., their electricity is almost half the price than it would be during the day. So in the winter months, pretty much from October onwards, they charge the Tesla Powerwall fully overnight and then set it to discharge during the day. Now it doesn't cover all their electricity, but at least those 13, 13 and a half kilowatt hours that they bought at a cheap rate can then be used during the day, saving them from having to buy the peak rate of electricity at least for the first 13 and a half kilowatt hours in that day. So that's something you may want to consider. Of course, batteries are expensive, sometimes prohibitively so, and I completely appreciate that, but that is a way you can help to offset your energy costs at the moment. There is no guarantee that we will always have cheap energy costs, i.e. the cheap off-peak rates. Um, you know, they could just disappear, at which point, if that was your main calculation for the battery, it might not work out. But hopefully this video has just given you a little bit of information about why you can't necessarily rely on solar all year round, especially in the UK, and the fact that essentially it's not going to fix your winter energy needs um, because it can't. But batteries are definitely worth considering. Hope you found this little video useful. If you have any questions, um, I'll try and help as best I can if you pop them in the comment section below. If you found the video useful, give it a thumbs up. That really does help me out. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe as that definitely helps me out a lot. Thank you very much for watching and I do hope I see you again next time. Goodbye.